All right, so let's get started with part seven of the Tenable Vulnerability Management Series. Today, we're going to start talking about, let me switch change over here. We're going to be working on the Explorer. So we've already done the overview. We've done the scans. Now we're going to be looking at the Explorer view. So I'll tell you how I use this at work. So a lot of times when we're taking care of vulnerabilities for customers, they want to know, like, you know, there's different reports that you can run that can kind of answer their questions like, you know, like, what have y'all done for us as a company? How do we know that you're actually like fixing things? And so we got multiple ways that we show them. But I really do like this view and the executives like this view pretty good because what it does is it shows the vulnerabilities over time. So a lot of times what you'll see it in an example here is let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit. OK, so like, say, for instance, on Patch Tuesday, what we tend to see is like a lot of times on Patch Tuesday. And let's see, that would be on for January. Let's see if we can go back. So January patch Tuesday would be around the 9th. OK, so if we look at around the 9th, then typically what we see is a lot of Microsoft updates get released around the 9th. We didn't really see a spike here, but for some reason we saw a spike around the 17th. But if you notice, the total number of assets didn't change until we got around here. So we went from like 52 to 53. So let's break down what this looks like looks like first. OK, so I'm going to change to the wide view so you can see it. So the the four lines you have here are basically your criticals high medium and low vulnerabilities okay and so you can track those also in the middle here the second section these are your assets okay so these are the blue line essentially these are the amount of devices that have been detected this can be workstations it can be domains or ip addresses that were detected by other scans but basically anything that's detected by any of the tenable products a lot of times gets like put into this assets table and it shows up here. And then here, what you have is this green line across the bottom. This is the average duration. So this basically shows you like how long a particular on average scans are taking. So if you start to see some outliers, okay, this scan is taking like 12 hours, then you can kind of uh, like review that and see if something is wrong. Uh, but once again, it's the scan duration. And then this at the bottom is like an overlay this last one at the very bottom, it kind of like shows you a combination of the criticals, the average scan times and assets and like tracks it all on one graph. And this allows you to be able to determine really kind of like how successful. But specifically, one of the things you're looking at here is we want to see that the vulnerabilities over time are going down. So we're at 30 criticals, 32 criticals. So now we're roughly hovering around 23 criticals. And essentially, you want to always make sure this is trending down. But once again, around Patch Tuesday, the second Tuesday every month, you're going to see a spike. Now, I typically try to cover only one thing, but like that was only two minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the findings view. OK, so findings is basically where Tenable aggregates all of the different data uh, from all the different products. And if you can see across the top, we kind of get a breakdown. Now, I don't use the findings tab as much. Some of my teammates go straight here. I kind of go to it indirectly. So I go to findings typically by doing, I click on tenable here and I click on, cause I'm usually looking at the, at the agents, Nessus agents. So if I click here on the total number, it takes me into the findings view, but you can also go menu and findings. Okay. And this is where it's aggregating all the vulnerability information. You also have cloud misconfiguration. So if you're using a tenable cloud product or something like that, and you're integrated using cloud scans or something like that, then this information will show up here. Host audits, once again, not as familiar with host audits, but it also shows here. And then web application scans, which we do a pretty decent amount of those. That's basically a specific type of tenable scan that targets web pages. It allows you to be able to, be able to like log in to basic contact forms and do other kind of like things that allow you to submit data. And it looks for vulnerabilities and those type of things specific to web applications. But that all shows up here. But specific for today, we're going to look at the vulnerabilities. And you can see it shows the asset name, IP address, severity, plugin name, VBR. We talked about that in a previous video, the tenable vulnerability priority rating. The CVSS is common, wait, common, vulnerability, common vulnerability scoring system. The state, whether it's active or new, or if it's fixed or resurfaced. We talked about that in the previous video. Make sure you watch that if you have any questions about that. The score, the origin, like if it's tenable IO, tenable cloud, tenable one, asset tags, these are things you can associate with it. And then when it was last seen, when the last time the vulnerability was seen in this situation. And gotta be mindful, you also have last seen an asset like the computer itself the last time it was seen, but you also have the last time the vulnerability itself was seen. And typically these are not the only columns. So a lot of times you can go to columns and you have all these other columns that you can add. So be mindful. 
that these are just the default, but you can look at first scene, live result. All of these columns are available here, so you can add those to kind of make your findings view what it needs to be. Now we dug into the vulnerabilities. This you saw in a previous video, so I'm not going to cover that. Once again, you go back to the previous video if you have any, if you want to look at vulnerabilities. But we're going to dig into deeper. We're going to start looking at individual vulnerabilities in upcoming videos, but not this one. So let's go ahead and let's go to the assets tab. Okay. So this is where, once again, and I talked a little bit about this in the previous video. How many times have I said that to say? Well, what happens is any tenable product that's scanning, identifying assets, whether it's cloud, whether it's uh, via the local subnet or the local lo area network or an agent on the machine, it's all going to be aggregated here to the asset menu. Okay. So a lot of times, basically a lot of people, they get confused because a lot of times they're looking and say, oh man, well, I've got 12 hosts in my asset table, but when I go to settings and I look at the number of agents that I have installed, which is right here, like, oh, like I have 20 agents that are linked here. But when I look in my assets table, and let's click on that again, it should be more than 20. Uh, well, I think we did some purges on the asset maybe. But anyway, when I look at my asset table for host, and by the way, this is doing last seen within 30 days. So let's get rid of that. And then let's look at license equal because you can look at when some assets, they become unlicensed, like if they're not actively scanned. Okay, here we go. So I got 53 in my, in my host table, but I only have 20 agents. Well, that's because you only have 20 agents. These are things that may be unlicensed. They may be identified through the external, like the internet scan or the cloud scanner, basically. So there are multiple things. But remember, all the tenable products, they will aggregate those things that are identified into this asset table so it doesn't match the agents table or the sensors, which is the Nessus agents, because remember that is just one product. Okay. So make sure you differentiate from those. If you have questions, leave that in the comment. So the, also the assets, just like I told you before, I want to go back to a generic version. When you come in, it only looks at last seen in 30 days and license. Sometimes you have to get rid of that because sometimes we're trying to true up things between different environments, right? And so it may be something that that's not been seen in 30 days. Maybe the tenable agent stopped working or got uninstalled and stuff like that. So sometimes we have to be able to use this. But once again, I encourage you to use the filter because once again, if you look at the filter and I'm going to zoom in here, it says the same thing. Last seen within 30 days and license is equal to yes. And, and you can add a whole bunch of other stuff. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we're looking for AWS. So we have to say AWS instance ID or AWS security group. I mean, we've got all kind of options and stuff like that that we can use. So I encourage you get in there, get comfortable with this really basic query language that allows you to do it. OK, and so this is kind of assets in a nutshell. But then we get into it. This is beneficial because if you drill into the assets, you can tag like have tags and tags allow you to be able to search. It also allows you to do automatic actions against certain things within Tenable. So tags are very helpful. We'll dig into tags. I don't use tags a lot, but we do use them at work, some basic tagging for different things. And then the asset information, it gives everything from the asset ID. Each device in here has a unique asset ID. So just because something has the same name doesn't mean it's necessarily the same asset, okay? That being the case. Also, if you look here, general purpose, like system type, operating system gives you that, IP address, you got MAC addresses and stuff like that. All kind of stuff, you know, all the different MAC addresses. Most of your computers, if you don't know, they have multiple MAC addresses. Your wireless, your LAN, like your your physical like uh, cable plug-in, or, or your network, your Ethernet car, right? Okay. Uh, but then also your virtual machine addresses, all that stuff. So it sees all of that because the agent is on the machine. Fully qualified domain name, all this information, BIOS ID, everything. And then also when it on on this is the asset information, but the asset scan information first seen. When was the asset first seen in Tenable? When was it last seen? Is this an active asset or is this something that's been removed? Last authenticated scan. So it was last seen on 310, but it was not hasn't been scanned since 221. Well, this could be the scan time because the device has to be scanned. A device has to be online at the time it's scanned. Okay, so sorry for that being off the screen a little bit. But all this information is available and you want to make sure you pay attention. And this is where IT asset management comes into play. Tenable only scans devices that are online. So if you start to see a, a delta between or a certain amount of time between the last time the asset was seen, which means it's checking into the console right here. And that's the last seen date, but you haven't gotten a scan in like almost a month. Okay, you got a disconnect. Okay, what is going on with this asset? Has the tenable agent 
it's obviously was there on the 10th but which is today but it's not getting scanned is it in the right group to get scanned has the scan been deleted has the scan been disabled is this device offline during the time of the scan those are the questions you have to ask yourself because you're not going to ever get updated vulnerability information the vulnerability could have been remediated but you're never going to know unless you get an updated scan and that's the way tenable works with a plug-in it has to scan again to identify that the vulnerability is remediated so it will scan but just because you like a good example of something that may be a disconnect there is is you'll have a computer it's got a vulnerability for windows 10 you upgrade the machine to windows 11 tenable scans again it noticed that the, the vulnerability it can't verify that the vulnerability is there or not because the machine has been changed the operating system has, has been upgraded to a new version and therefore that vulnerability will stay in tenable not as fixed and as an active vulnerability because it could not verify that the vulnerability was actually remediated even though we know that the operating system changed so you have to have that kind of intelligence and correlation you have to do yourself right to and i don't mean intelligence like i mean i mean intelligence as an in information right you have to have and be able to like take this information put it all together to be able to make an accurate assessment assessment for your organization or your client when you use Intenable. and i think this is a good stopping point I hopefully I have some questions for this one so if you have any questions Drop a like on the video first, subscribe to the channel, leave me some comments, and I'll do my best to help you out. And uh, once again, I'll see you on the next video. This is a series, so we'll dig further into Tenable.